hear my wife. Aisha, 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 come on, wake up, Fajr, you have school, Aisha. And this goes for half an hour. <laughs> and the girls do not move at all. And finally she comes, can't you see what's happening? Do something. I say, I say you're always nervous, you're always shouting. I go, said, exactly, Aisha, wake up. <laughs> Is it my voice? I never beat my children. Well, not for the past 10 years. I haven't beaten them, alhamdulillah. Is it my voice or is it the way that the wife talks to the children to the extent that they don't pay any attention? They're always tense, they're always hyper, they're always uh, uh, nervous. So, I calm down. In the beginning it was difficult, now khalas, we're used to my mother's voice. So the best thing I would do to my wife is to relieve her from this. So you need the sharing and the responsibility with the children. So many times the kids come, they have a lot of problems. The mother talks to them, this is haram, you should not wear this, this is uh, inappropriate, this is, this is, this is. And they cannot communicate with the girls. They don't listen. I sit with them five minutes I give them a story and I tell them in a nice way and I ask them what is your problem what what do you uh, do not like in what I say and they say no this is and, and I give them another try to yeah, any, uh, uh, bring them in a, a nice and peaceful way and they like it this a mother cannot do so a mother needs a good husband to take care of the responsibility a mother can shout for 23 hours. This is how Allah made her. She is affection, uh, affectionate? No. Is, it? is this an English word? <laughs> affectionate? No. This is more like a Frankenstein word. Anyhow, she has a lot of affection to uh, uh, the children. She is loving. She is caring. She is giving without any limits. But there is a gap, and this gap is closed by the husband, the man. But at the same time, the man cannot give love and affection and care and compassion. A lot of the times, my daughters complain that I don't hug them and I don't kiss them a lot. What do you from me? Why? They complain. So I have to oppress my feelings, you know? <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> I have to do this. On the other hand, the mother, his nature to her, kissing and cuddling and, and embracing them, this is their nature. So it's a gap. Each one of us has to fill it. A man has to share his responsibility in the house. As men, we have ready-made excuses. When my wife says, why don't you do this? I work, I bring money, I go eight hours, I do the shopping. And you want me to do this and this and that? We have ready reasons and justifications. The simplest answer, my wife says, okay, sit home, I'll do it. <laughs> Seriously, you're enjoying yourself, you're going out, you're meeting people, you're driving, you're having fun. You're, I'm here cornered in four walls. I'm doing all your dirty work and you are refusing to share something with me, with the children? This is a big problem we have to take care of. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillahi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man ihtada bi hadihi wa sanna bi sunnatihi ila yawm al-dini amma ba'du We shall start insha'Allah in mentioning engagement and by engagement we mean what is known as in Arabic do you know nobody speaks Arabic engagement is called khitbah khitbah and a lot of the Arabs make a mistake between khitbah and khutbah so a brother goes and said, MashaAllah, yesterday I made khutbah. And I said, MashaAllah, what masjid? He said, no, 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 I got, I got engaged. So it's khutbah. It's not khutbah. 
So we have to go and discuss how is it possible in Islam to get married. And first of all, we have rules of engagement. And this statement is usually used in wars, the rules of engagement. But as I said, there are similarities between marriage and death and war as well. So, first of all, engagement, is it marriage? No, it is only, it is merely a promise. So, you have to know that if you propose to a woman and they accept, but you're not married, the consequences are great because in Arabia, in Arab countries, once they approve of the engagement, what happens? She becomes like his wife. They go out to the movies. He may give her a ring or a bracelet and he himself touches her and, 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 and put it on her. All of this is haram. She is a stranger still. You two are strangers. Nowadays, when a person gets engaged, he talks with his fiance on the phone. He, talk, he SMSs her. He maybe video chat. And all of this, all of this is not acceptable in Islam. It's haram. She's a stranger to you. What's the formality of getting engaged? How is it? Is there any certain formalities? No. The sky is the limit. It depends from culture to culture. There isn't any recommendation. If a person likes a woman, he proposes to her father, to her guardian. The norm, I don't know, how do you propose here in, in India? If all married people are not talking. Yaki, this is not, you're not going to propose again, huh? The groom parents go, okay. Yeah, but there is a problem here. It's cultural, but it's also Islamic. The parents go to the parents, men and women. They sit together. The majority. This is haram. This is unacceptable. I know this is culture, and pe but do people do it? No way. You have to segregate men from women. And not only that, in Arabia and maybe some, some parts of Arabia, maybe uh, not in Saudi, this is not alhamdulillah practice yet. Mm -hmm. The father has to see the, the girl. Yeah, what, what, what are you doing? He's the one who's getting married. Once he gets married, she becomes your daughter-in-law. But before that, you have the ability to stay away, my son. I'm going. <laughs> This happens, this happens, it can happen, and therefore there isn't any certain procedure how to get engaged, how to propose to a woman. The norm in Saudi Arabia is a woman's job. Everything is brewed and cooked and prepared by the women. So the, 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 the mother of the, of the boy, Salaamu Alaikum, wa alaykum salam, my name is so and so, and uh, we heard that you have a daughter by the name of so-and-so. Okay, on the phone, they start exchanging information, data gathering. So he works, he doesn't work, his education is so-and-so, the, uh, the level of practicing. He's a mutawwi, mashallah, define. What do you mean by practicing? That he doesn't listen to music, he doesn't have a TV. Uh, in his house, he prays five prayers in the masjid. My, he's bearded, his stubs, okay. Then we go to who are his shiukh. So you have to label him. Is he one of the shiukhs, you know, half half or mashallah. Then we, okay, everything is okay. She conveys a picture to the father. A man came with this uh, 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 quality. Is this a, mm, okay, let me check. He checks. Okay. Then nothing happens. The mother comes for a visit. Usually the mother with her sister, with few of her daughters, three, four females, just to drink tea. Of course, it's not drinking tea. It is 
checking time. They check up. So, mashallah, who's the, the bride? Oh, who is our bride? They say, nothing happened, no engagement. So she comes with the tea or with the juice. And she, sorry, <laughs> just to prepare her mother-in-law. But, and they check, they, they check, they look at her. If they think that the features would appeal to the boy, they're very they're chit-chatting, very friendly, nothing. They go to the boy and they say, Wallahi, we find her to be so and so and so. I, as a mother, I think that she's suitable for you. The boy feels good about it. He goes and proposes to the father directly, not his parents. So he talks to me. I say, okay, let's meet. Come in my office. Come in this place. We sit for an hour or two. I interview him. I like him. I go to the daughter and say, well, I met him. He's this high. He's this short. He's this fat. He's this thin. Mashallah, he's very pleasant when he speaks. Uh, he's knowledgeable. I give her the good qualities. And if there are any bad qualities as well. Of course, I do my investigation. I check. Before everything is khalas ready, I checked. I thoroughly uh, 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 checked on him. Then I tell him, come to visit me in my house. He comes, he sits with the girl, talks with her for half an hour. Let's see if there is chemistry. They leave, he likes her, her mother, his mother calls. She approves of it, alhamdulillah. Then the father calls me. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh, how are you? So and so, yeah, we, we would like to come and visit you. She's the most welcome. So he comes with his son two, three, four of his brothers, maybe cousins, you know, we call it wajaha, meaning that he wants to show up himself and his family. Of course, he's not going to bring the whole tribe, but four or five, maximum seven, maybe, to come and, and produce and introduce themselves. And I would also call my brothers, my sons-in-law and my, the one, uh, my in-laws, the uncle uh, of uh, the girl, they would come, they would sit for half an hour, our things, oh, you know this one, yeah, he worked with me, you know this. We start to make connections. Saudi is as big as Chennai, population-wise. We have very little people, so we can get connected together. After that, the father says, we would like to propose to your daughter, so-and-so, for my son, so-and-so. And I would say, you're more than welcome, we will not find anyone better than you. We bring a sheep, uh, 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 a goat, and we eat. Ma'asalaam, ma'asalaam. This engagement is done. Khalas. End of story. Now they're engaged. Do they talk to each other? No. Do they communicate? Does he call her say, Mabrook? Congratulations. No, nothing. So you're still a stranger to him. Tay. Then what is the use of such an engagement? It's just a promise. There's nothing binding. Meaning that after all of this, a month later he says, tell you what, I changed my mind. I don't want to continue. Is this permissible? Well, no problem. Is it permissible for me to say, I changed my mind as well. I don't want to give my daughter. Yes. Not only that, it is not permissible while she's engaged to approach uh, well, not, not this one. Hmm. Yeah, this is the second point. But we will go on to it. Now, this is the normal way of getting engaged. It is not permissible for a man to go and approach a girl directly. As I've mentioned in the early session this morning. To go and say, well, I love to get married to you. You're a practicing woman, mashallah. You're God-fearing. Can I have your number? This is not proposing this is dating it's haram so it is not also permissible for a woman to throw herself to a man i had so many emails sheikh there is this imam in my uh, community he's young he's unmarried and mashallah his recitation is very beautiful and i want to get married to him so can i call him is it permissible this is immodest this is strange in our society as Muslims. 
and this is degrading for a woman. If a woman proposes to a man, this is very degrading. How would the man look at her? Men, how would you look at a woman proposing to you in marriage? Happy. <laughs> truthful. He is truthful. It's true. Some would feel happy. But I tell you, the majority might feel happy. But after marriage, every day, every night he will insult her. You threw yourself on me. Is there any woman with pride and dignity come and propose to a man? No matter how rich, how influential, how knowledgeable this man is, this is degrading. This is not permissible. One would say, Tab Khadija did it. Did Khadija do it? No. Her friend said to her that, Wallahi, Muhammad is a good man. How about if I propose to him? And he just mentioned your name. And she said, well, okay. I didn't initiate it. So she went and she proposed, and she, not proposed, she suggested. Would you like to marry? So she said, I, I would, but I'm, yeah, I don't think she will accept me. No, she will accept you. It's a different story than a woman calling. And a woman, I don't want to mention names or countries because this would be yeah, very easy to find for the people. But this happens. A lot of the brothers, the da'is, get similar requests from sisters. This is haram. You have to draw the line. A scholar is a man at the end of the day. I get people on Huda. You know Ask Huda program? Where I answer Q&A live on TV. People calling, Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh. Wa Alaikum Salaam. I love you for the sake of Allah. <laughs> And, and you can imagine my wife, what she did when I went back home from the studio. <laughs> this is bad. This is haram. Yeah, but didn't the Prophet said, if someone loves his brother Muslim, he should tell him that, that he loves him for the sake of Allah? The same sex. Not the opposite sex. <laughs> the hadith is directed to the same sex. It's like coming and saying, the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that when you smile in the face of a Muslim, this is charity. So you go out with all the sisters and give them a big smile. <laughs> Why are you, what are you doing? Said, I'm charity, Shaykh, charity. <laughs> this is haram. You have to understand that our religion is very strict with the grace of Allah in protecting us. It draws a line, you should never cross this line. So, a woman, no matter how scholarly you think a person is, or how beautiful his voice is, you do not propose to anyone. Have someone else, have your brother, no problem. Your father, no problem. Umar did it. May Allah please with him. Umar went to Abu Bakr. He said, Hafsa is now ready for get, getting married. So, do you like to get married to Hafsa? He said, mm, not today. And he went to Uthman, uh, sorry, he went to Uthman first. And then, because Uthman lost his uh, uh, wife, died, and he was widowed, and he said, no, I, I, she just died, I, I don't feel like getting married. He went to Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr did not give him a straight, clear answer, yani, as if he ignored him. Umar says, I felt, it, I felt bad about it. Abu Bakr is my best friend, and this is what he is doing when I'm proposing my, wife, my daughter to him. And then the Prophet proposed to her. After the Prophet proposed, Abu Bakr said, By Allah, I did not answer you because I heard the Prophet mentioning her. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning that he is interested in her. So I could not accept or refuse. I just, I couldn't. And I could not disclose my Prophet's secret, alayhi salatu wasalam. And this removed what he felt. So it is permissible. Yes, if I have a daughter and I see someone who is righteous, I would go to him, no problem. Akhi, why don't you get married? Sheikh, wallah, I don't have... I'll give you my daughter in marriage. Who did this among the, among the tabi'een? Saeed ibn al-Musayyib. One of the greatest tabi'een. His daughter, the son of the caliph, the caliph proposed to his daughter for his son. He refused. Imagine Saeed refusing giving his daughter to the son of the greatest, one of the greatest caliphs of the entire time and he had a student one of the poorest and he could not come for a week 
When he checked upon him, they told him his wife died. So the student came after a, wife, uh, after a week and he said, how are you? He said, well, alhamdulillah, Shaykh. Uh, did you get married? He said, no. You want to get married? He said, who will give me in marriage? He said, I give you my daughter in marriage. Do you accept? He said, yes, I accept. And the, court, the, the, the seminar or the workshop finished in the masjid and the guy went home. He's telling. And all of a sudden, he hears this knocking on the door. And he said, who is this? And he heard the sound saying, Saeed. So he goes, Saeed, Saeed, Saeed. I can't find someone I know by the name of Saeed. Never crossed his mind that it was Saeed ibn al-Musayyib, his sheikh, one of the greatest scholars of Islam. Everybody knows Saeed ibn al-Musayyib. So he said, I opened the door and I found Saeed in my face. Oh, sheikh, what is this? He moved and he pushed his daughter. It was something in black. And he pushed her in the house. He said, take your wife and left. And he said, I did not know what to do. <laughs> I'm in the house with this woman. He said, the daughter of Saeed, he, like this. So I immediately rushed out. And she was very shy. You know, she could not speak. What, what do you expect from a woman to do in such a position? So immediately he rushed to his mother. And he told her, what do you want me to do with this? She said, Wallahi, I will never speak to you. If you approach her before I get her ready for you. She's a mother-in-law, but she's... A woman, she knows that, you know, you cannot take your wife like this without her being prepared, uh, nicely dressed, beautified, uh, a wedding, a ceremony. Sa'id ibn Musayyib, khalas, over, take her. Is you a righteous person? I don't have nothing to do with her. So after two or three days, she prepared her and everything was ready. He was wedded to her. He said, I went in. And she was one of the most beautiful women I had ever laid my eyes on. So I stayed with her the seven days, which you know that the rights of a wife to stay seven days for a virgin and three days for a non-virgin. He did not have any other wife, but he stayed seven days, not going to the class, not doing this. On the eighth day, he wanted to leave. His wife told him, where are you going? He said, I'm going to your father. I want to attend the classes. She said, sit, sit, sit. I'll teach you. Because what he has, I have. And see, she started teaching him. Because she had the knowledge of her father. And she said, subhanAllah, I had it made. What more can I need? A beautiful wife, a righteous wife, and a knowledgeable wife. This is the story you will find in the life story of Sayyid ibn Musayyib. May Allah have mercy on his soul. So, I don't know what brought, must, brought us to this subject. <sighs> Anyhow, yes, yes, the father is allowed to go on a, a, and propose to his daughter. But the woman, this is completely prohibited. Number four. Okay. Which is number three here. You have no permission at all to propose to a woman who is married, of course. Can you? A woman who is divorced but still in the idda, in the waiting period. A woman who has been widowed but still in the idda period. All of this haram. A woman who someone proposed to her. So I know that my friend Muhammad proposed to Fatima, the daughter of so and so. And they accepted. So I go next week and I proposed to her father knowing that my her father would like me more because I have more money I have more influence I have this and that so the Prophet forbade this why hmm? competing so competition is wrong yeah yeah and it's not because of competing is good it, no, not a promise. It's the grudge. It's the hatred that would cause in Muhammad's heart. So, for example, Ali sells to Ahmed something. And they say, okay, I'll give it to you for this. And, okay, very good price. In between, I come. I said, no, 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 it's not a good price. I'll give you cheaper. And he changes his mind and comes to me. I spoil the transaction. How would he feel? 
very bad. Likewise, if I spoil his engagement, he would feel very bad. However, this is understood, huh? Now, look at, look at this scenario. Someone proposes to my daughter, I accept. A week later, someone else proposes unknowingly that she's already engaged. But he's a medical doctor. He's richer. He's more knowledgeable. He's more handsome. Hmm. What to do? Can I accept his proposal? Can I accept his engagement? Yes. No, even if I don't break. Even if I don't tell him. Am I entitled to show my daughter to someone else? Yeah. She's not married. Because he may see someone else and break and get married to someone else. In the time of the engagement, the father, I would not say the son and the Holy Ghost, but I... <laughs> the father and his daughter have the choice to change their minds, to explore more possibilities. So yes, we, in so many times, a girl has three people proposing unknowingly. They don't know. So she has no problem in seeing all three. And once she determines who to accept, she accepts. So this is your right as a woman. You don't, it's not a, a, a binding agreement. No, khalas, he's engaged. No, you're not. You can change your mind anytime, alhamdulillah. Okay, among the taboos and restrictions in engagements, as I said, she's not your wife. You cannot sit alone with her. Do you have this here? Is the one uh, proposing to to a girl, does he sit alone with her in the engagement time? Huh? It happens. This is haram. It is haram after the engagement and definitely it's haram before the engagement. Some of the brothers when they, when they propose to a woman and they want to make the Islamic official interview, which is the first one, it's his right to go and sit and look at her and it's her right to look at him, exchange views, look at each other. They do not have anyone with them. Or they may have the mother. And the mother is not the guardian. She, she has to have a, fee, a, a male uh, person present to safeguard her from this. Among the things that are uh, um, part of the sunnah is that you look at the one you want to marry. Not only look, also stare. Seriously. So many times I get questions. Sheikh, a guy came and proposed to me and we sat for half an hour and he left. I think he's a good man, but I seriously don't remember his face. And I'm afraid that if I get married to him, then he's not the one that I had in mind. So can I sit with him again? What would the answer be? Yes, yes, sit and stare, but preferably do it first time. And that is why I always tell the brothers who go and propose and the sisters who are being proposed to. When he sits, talk to him. Look him into the eyes. Measure him from top to bottom. This is your legitimate right. Not, do not come after the marriage contract has been made and you say, Sheikh, I thought he was 6'4". Apparently he was 4 foot. He's a midget. <laughs> I didn't see. And he says the same. Some of the men are evil. He saw her well, but Sheikh, can I see her again? <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Huh? Make sure? <laughs> ah. No, 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 no. You're evil. If you took a good look and you're satisfied, khalas. Until, inshallah, the marriage contract is done. Uh, okay. The, re the, the evidence that this is from the Sunnah. I have marriage. Take me as an older uh, uh, brother of yours, if not an uncle. I have a problem with when I see a two-year-old girl wearing hijab. Or a four-year-old girl. 
or a six-year-old girl. I think that this is too extreme. I feel very bad when I see a man practicing bringing his two-year-old child or three-year-old child for prayer. Is this good? Some people say, yes, let him get used to it. No. The Prophet told you, instruct him to pray when they're before seven, you do not say anything. If he wants to pray on his own, pray. I'm not going to touch you. But every time from age five, four, five, Daddy, take me to the, school, to, to, to the masjid with you. No, you're still young. Every single day, you're young. You're young. Six years old, you're young. He's eager to go to the masjid. Seven years old, let's go. Oh, very happy. So he goes and he wants to go. Rather than you forcing him from when he's three years old. I mean, he may go when he's three, when he's four. But when he becomes six or seven, he's fed up. He doesn't want to go anymore. Now you want to beat him. No, you cannot beat him until he's ten. Likewise, girls from an early age, I, maybe because I have, alhamdulillah, 13 of them, wear normal dresses. Let them enjoy their childhood. Let them go. Let them play. Why? Yaqi, do you do this? You do this, huh? For two hours. Look what happens to you. Your ears grow big. <laughs> yani, your children... Some children want to imitate the others. Yes, but again, there is a difference when they themselves want to do it. I'm going out. My wife is with me. My two year, three year, four year, five year will never ever say, I do this. Maybe they'll do it once or twice, but the rest of the day, no. When they're six, they were abayas. Head covered, still young. When they 